because this has impacted me so severely, it's not something that we can really move forward in the same way our relationship was in the past. This is a totally new relationship now. You're listening to The Brendan Murata Show. In this episode, a mother and son discuss circumcision. Carter Steinhoff feels harmed by circumcision and reached out to me to facilitate a discussion between him and his mom, Tiffany. His mother recognizes the harm of circumcision and wants to find out how she can support her son and create a safe connection and relationship with him. This is an emotionally challenging discussion, but an important one. Now, here is Carter and Tiffany Steinhoff. So I want to start by thanking the two of you for having the bravery to have this conversation, because I know it's a conversation that I've had with my family. And anytime there's this level of engagement or emotional intimacy between family members, I know that it, it often brings up all of our stuff, all of the, yeah. the things that we're, we're we're feeling or holding on to our own emotional patterns. And, and I appreciate the two of you being willing to look at them together and communicate around it. Glad so, to be here. Yeah. yeah. So why don't we start? What I'd like to know from each of each of you is what you're feeling right now, just where you are in, in your, in your body and your own emotions and what it is you'd like to get out of this conversation what what it would look like seem like feel like sound like if this went exactly the best possible version of this conversation it could be hmm. carter do you want to go first <laughs> yeah, what, yeah sure. why, why don't you start carter well i'm definitely very nervous to have this conversation um knowing that it's going to be broadcast to a larger audience down the line but i'm also really excited um, to begin having this conversation, you know, with my mom and, and watching um, my mom get involved in some advocacy around this issue, or just, you know, maybe initially having a discussion on this topic. It's something that's obviously uh, very important to me. And at this point, really, you know, a part of my identity. And so having my mom involved in this process with me is, um, it's really encouraging. It makes me feel um, optimistic about our relationship in the future. Um, and overall, I'm getting a great vibe. Mm -hmm. So Carter, you, you mentioned there's one part of you that feels nervous. Is there anything that part of you would need or, or, or wants or? Um, you know, definitely a component of it is not necessarily um, that my mom and I are going to be speaking about this issue, but it's just that I'm going to be publicly coming out as being opposed to this practice and as being a victim of this practice, right? And so that's a difficult um, identity to put forward that, and it's something that I'm not necessarily 100% comfortable with yet but it's the reality of my situation. So that's how I'm uh, going to move forward. It's just difficult for me right it's now the, to, to accept that. The nervousness of public reaction. It's something I'm very familiar with. Right. Um, and then the second part of that question is if this went the, the best possible way it could, or, or you got everything you wanted out of this conversation, what would that look like or sound like? So a while back, you asked me, like, what am I trying to get out of this conversation? Or why, you know, why am I interested in speaking with my mom on this issue publicly? And I didn't have a great answer um, to that. And the answer is evolving over time. But I think it was difficult for me to translate my thoughts around this. But I'm, I'm looking to establish the role that a parent or parental figure has in advocacy um, on their child's behalf or really on their own behalf, if their child feels harmed physically and psychologically by this practice. And so my experience, you know, with my own parents and experiences that I've heard from other men with their parents is that they are very, very disappointed and in some ways even feel betrayed um, by their parents' response to their trauma. And so I would like to begin exploring what it is that men who feel like victims of this practice 
are looking for from their family and the people that are close to them um, on this topic. And so what I would like to accomplish through this meeting is beginning to establish that and then um, inspiring other parents and other men to begin having these conversations as well. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you are interested in stepping into a role of leadership around this issue. And part of what you're looking to do is model for others how parents and men can have conversations about this and how parents can advocate for their children around this. And that there might be a part of you that would want her to advocate for you as well in the role that you're stepping into. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. So mm -hmm. Tiffany, congratulations. You've raised a leader of men <laughs> and he's mm -hmm. stepping into that role now. So mm -hmm. I'd like to know from you how it is that you're feeling and and what your needs are or what it is you'd like around this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like Carter said, uh, I'm nervous because we've had plenty of private conversations, but this is the first time we've ever taken it public, you know, where we're publicly expressing this. So there's a level of nervousness. I don't think I'll be surprised by anything Carter has to say. Um, other than maybe new things come out of this conversation that I didn't know before. But um, yeah, feeling a bit nervous and there is truth around this public reaction. Um, many people have different thoughts on this. Um, and as I've been working with Carter, just having more confidence in you know, being firm in what I believe so that when I have a conversation with someone, you know, I'm not really intimidated by their reaction if it's something other than what I would have expected. So um, I'm getting more comfortable talking about it. And um, I think as time goes on, I'll become more and more comfortable as well. But in terms of what I wanna get out of this or what I'm hoping or what the ideal situation that would come from this, um, you know, I love, I love my son. And um, when he first approached me with this, I can remember it was a parking lot. We were having a conversation and he was really kind of, um, he was upset with me for a lot of different things. And then out of the blue, he just said, and I'm mad that, I, that you had me circumcised. And my first reaction, because I didn't understand where that was coming from, I kind of laughed. I thought, what are you talking about? And my first reaction was, I laughed because I, I, it seemed such a far-fetched idea. And we've come so far since then. We were estranged for a period of time. Um, you know, it, it's been, it's been a, a long ride. The fact that we are where we are today is a true testament of us kind of leaning into each other and understanding each other. And, you know, I, I get kind of emotional talking about it, of course, but I'm so happy where we are today. You know, this has been a, a long, a long process and I'm really happy where we are today. Um, I've often asked Carter, what do, what do you need from me? You know, and at times he said, I don't know, I'm still working on that, I'm still working. So I feel like this is the next step in that conversation where he's, he's had some time to process it and think about it and say, hey mom, this is where I need you to be. And my level of understanding and education is ready for that. It sounds like you two have grown a lot in your relationship together. And I wanna add that it's okay to be emotional about it. Yeah. This, is a, this is a good thing to be emotional about. So thank you for being willing to have that conversation. Since I know that one of the things Carter would like is to model for others how that conversation can happen. How did the two of you change in that conversation and, and have that conversation over time? Since when you initially started talking, you laughed and you didn't really understand it. And now it sounds like you have a much deeper understanding. Right. Well, in the beginning, um, and I think maybe you experienced this as well, Brendan, is when there's a lot of anger surrounding this. So I, I remember Carter had a lot of, it was a lot of anger that he was feeling and sometimes directed towards me, right? A lot of the time, it was a very angry thing. Like, I love you, but I'm so angry with you. And that anger, I feel, has kind of turned into something a little more positive. He's more action oriented, more, and that, that kind of help to build build the relationship but you know as he's moved through these stages of understanding and probably 
very much so grief of what happened. Um, I think we've, you know, and I, I've had grief, you know, I've had guilt, I've had, um, you know, how could I have harmed my child in such a way? A lot of regret, you know, those situations where you can't go back and change anything. Um, but Carter's been very, very patient with me. And, um, you know, that anger I see has kind of turned into something a lot more positive, but that didn't happen overnight. It was a process. And um, I'm, I'm just really glad that he's shown this level of forgiveness. It sounds like you felt some, some guilt and regret around this too. Yeah. And maybe you are still feeling it now. Yeah. Is and there something that you yeah, need? And... Go ahead. No, and probably a little bit of anger, like at the time, there was really no, I mean, no one sat me down. It was in a time where we really had internet. No one sat me down and said, here are the list of, you know, the pros and cons. And I could have walked away and made a decision. Um, it seemed very much like I was just, you know, subscribing to norms around that time. And so a lot of anger, like where was the, where was the literature? Where was the, you know, the opportunity for me to make an informed decision? It sounds, you know, I know a lot of men around this issue have anger that they weren't protected, but it would also make sense to me if parents had a lot of, of similar feelings around the fact that they also were not protected. And it sounds right. like you may have had your own feelings to process around this. And I'm curious where you are with that and how you've done that so far. Um, again, like I said, you know, when Carter and I were kind of estranged, the guilt was, was really magnified for me, you know, here I'd done something and now I couldn't even be with my son who I wanted to, to, to be close to. Um, so it was compounded. So as thing as, as Carter and I have uh, strengthened our relationship over time, I think that guilt is, is kind of subsiding. And again, like Carter took his anger and turned it into something more positive. I can take my guilt and try to turn it into something more positive. Or I was just telling Carter today as I was telling someone, you know, that I was doing this, this, this with Carter this afternoon. And they said, oh, what will you be talking about? And I confidently said, you know, without any fear, what I was, wh where we, in the very short version of where we had been with this process, and it opened up a conversation with her. And without her having any criticalness towards what we were talking about, she, she really listened. And it makes me feel like that's where I can, that's where I can be of a benefit, you know, being able to share my own personal experience, well, that through Carter, and, um, maybe just being confident in those conversations with people. I'm noticing that there are ways that both of you have a lot to give and a lot that you can offer the world. And then also ways that you're needing support. Yes. And part of the challenge, it sounds like for you, Tiffany, is that uh, there's absolutely ways that you as a parent and you as someone who experienced that half of this particular wounding or trauma might need support, but it's not always, a. it's not really, children are not usually the ones that offer parents support. So you might need right. support from people beyond him who, who are other people in your life. And it sounds like because Carter has put a lot of, of energy and learning into others who are involved on this issue, he's found some of that, but it sounds like you might need some of that as well as to, too. Yes. Completely agree. And, and where do you go for that? You know, there isn't a support group for mothers who. <laughs> there's actually an entire community of what are known as regret parents. And there's, yeah. there's multiple groups that speak about that online. So okay. that connecting with those is something that I'm certain will happen as a result of this podcast, because I'm, I know that those groups listen to me and, and I have a bit of an audience with them. So there are absolutely people who you might be able to reach out to there. But, you know, one of the things I've spoken with 
uh, people about is the need for more resources to help men in their healing. And it sounds like we might also need more resources to help parents in their healing too. Yes. So Carter, is there anything that you want to say to your mom in this conversation that we've anything about what you've heard so far, or is there anything that you're feeling right now? Yeah, you know, I think my mom kind of gave a good context for where we are at now in our relationship, but there are some areas that um, I wanted to offer some transparency and some honesty on. Um, and I think that a lot of the overt hostility that I've had in the past towards my parents and those close to me has dissipated significantly. So I'm not really expressing um, as much anger Mm. and disappointment and these feelings of betrayal towards towards my parents anymore and the reason is is because i'm looking to be diplomatic with them and establish a, a relationship a strong relationship in a way where we can move forward together but the reality is that behind the scenes a lot of these emotions still persist um, on a day-to-day -day basis they've definitely been reduced but um, I do have very strong emotions around that. And what, something that's really important to me is being honest about that and being upfront with my parents and the people around me about that, because I think that's critical to actually being able to move forward on this issue um, with my parents and, and with other people around me and with, with uh, society as a whole, to acknowledge that these very, very, very strong feelings exist on this issue and they're, they're very negative emotions, right? And so I kind of want to walk people through, I don't know if this is the time in the conversation to do that, but the sequence of events that leads a man to be in this position psychologically, right? What does it take to make a man or just a human being in general have these this strong of emotion towards something um, where it causes them to distance themselves from their parents? and um, you know, all of these other reactions that take place. Um, so if this is the time really to, to dive into that, I'm not sure if you wanted to direct the conversation somewhere else. But. Well, it sounds like that you have your own feelings around this issue you want seen and heard. And if there are things you want seen and heard, then let's right. say them and see them. Okay, fair enough. So I want people to meet the men who feel traumatized by this at a certain level right? Igno some acknowledgement um, of the severity of what took place. So this isn't, um, to me, something that an apology and a policy change or something like that can rectify in my situation um, and in the situation or how a lot of other men view this. This was a very significant event that happened to us. Um, and so the, the truth is, is that it's likely that these feelings that I have um, towards my parents, they're never going to fully go away, right? And there's going to be some remainder of that for the rest of my life. And I've been experiencing this now for four years, right? These very, very deep feelings of negativity towards my parents, right? It's so it's so unfortunate to say it, but sometimes I look at my mother and my father, I'm like, those are my mutilators, mm. right? That's horrifying to me. I'm like, wow, those are the individuals that facilitated genital mutilation on me. That is so frightening and horrifying. And I'm not going to, you know, keep preaching on that um, and, and go down that rabbit hole forever. But I, I want, you know, other men and other parents to understand that, you know, this is, this is the reality for some of us and how some of us view and, and frame this issue. So, you know, when I'm having conversations with my parents and we're joking and laughing around, a lot of the times behind the scenes, I'm like, whoa, this is, I'm having to confront the person that, you know, facilitated this very, very dark thing on, on, on me. And so... I want my mom to be aware of that. I want, you know, people in my life to be aware of that, that I feel like I'm a victim of an atrocity, right? And that's the reality I'm going to have to live in for the rest of my life. 
with everyone around me. It doesn't have to dominate everything, right? I want to live a good and productive life where I'm not constantly plagued by these negative emotions and these negative thoughts. But I do want some acknowledgement that this is probably going to be around in, in my psychological state for the rest of my life and that I will be traumatized by this for the rest of my life. Um, and I think there are ways to heal and, and move forward, but the physical consequences for me are severe. And that's just, um, that's just the, you know, impact that it's had on me personally. And so, um, having, you know, sexual relationships and things like this, this is always going to interfere with that for me. And so it's not something that I can just walk away from or move away from psychologically simply because the physical consequences impact me on a day-to-day -day basis and on a regular basis. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's a component of what I wanted to share with, with my mom is that unfortunately the severity of what happened is going to impact our relationship for the rest of our life. And that's something that I want to share with other people, other parents, other people that maybe are considering this, other parents, that this can impact a relationship with somebody's parents between a child and parents for the rest of their life in a negative way. Mm -hmm. So knowing that there is a part of you that feels that this was an atrocity, that mm -hmm. it's impacted you in a negative way, and that part of you holds your mom responsible for this. Yeah. How is it you'd like her to respond to that? Sure. Yeah. So, it? you know, I guess an, a good question to pose that I'm not really looking for an answer to this. It just, I think it just frames it in an interesting way. If I were to hire somebody to strap my mother down into a circumstraint and she had a significant quantity of her genital tissue and her genital structures ablated from her body, you know, just strapped her down and violently and perversely and wickedly mutilated her. Um, what would she expect from me? I was like, oh my God, I didn't know, right? Oh shoot, I'm so sorry, mom. I, I, had, I didn't know. The resources weren't available for me, right? I didn't, I didn't read enough. So shoot, ah, you, dang it. So it sounds mutilated. like you want more than just an apology. I'll but tell you what I would do. I would commit the rest of my life mm -hmm. to rectifying this atrocity that I committed. That was an act, right? If, I, if it was genuinely an accident, everyone involved, we just didn't know. Mm -hmm. And what, what would that look like for you if she yeah. actually did that? How would that, how would that, sh that show up? It's a difficult question to answer on the spot, right? There's actually a significant amount of um, context that would have to be shared for that. A lot of things that could be done, right? What is actually realistic for somebody? I don't necessarily have the answer to that at this moment, but I want that conversation to happen and continue. It's really an evolving conversation, I think, and not something totally dictated by myself. Um, it's really what is, you know, I want my mom to be a part of that conversation with me. And I don't want it to be something where I'm like, this is what I'm expecting of you, or um, you know, this is what I'm demanding from you. I want it to be this intuitive um, response from her or this organic response that emerges because she recognizes um, the impact that this had. Um, but I think what needs to happen first is the understanding of how this harmed me needs to be accepted by both parties, you know, obviously myself, I've accepted this, but then, you know, my mom as well, and really society at large. When I say things like mutilation and atrocity, right, those are grave hu human rights violations, very, very serious and significant. Um, and when you start framing in that context, I believe that the response is really going to be modified because of that. So it sounds like you want her to acknowledge the severity of what happened to you and the way that you'll know that she's seen it 
is that she responds the way you would if you engaged in something that severe towards her, which would be a lifelong commitment to making sure that the harm is undone and does not happen to others. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And some acknowledgement that, you know, what are, what she thought our relationship would look like um, is, is going to really have changed because of this. So, um, you know, how we have a relationship, what is, what I kind of am expecting of her is going to be much different than maybe what she envisioned when, when she started out here. And so, and I really don't want to come across as if I'm um, demanding anything or being hostile. I'm really looking to work with my mom, but I would think that another individual like my mom would expect something if I had done this to her, right? And so maybe beginning to frame it from that perspective can get people to understand, you know, what it is that individuals who feel traumatized by this are looking from their parents from, you know, from their parents on this issue. So Tiffany, I think most parents would have a very difficult time hearing what Carter just said. And you have been a very attentive listener during, during that. So I'd like to know what you're feeling now and how you feel about what he just said. Um, you know, I mean, he's maybe never said it that way, but he's very communicated very, very strongly um, a lot of these points with me. When he talks about, you know, sometimes I'm with my parents and, you know, we're, we're what would naturally be this really fun time. You know, we're all smiling and laughing, but inside my head, I'm thinking something very, very different. I've seen that look on him. I, I know where, where we sometimes lose him in that, and, and then my heart goes to him in that moment. And there's, there's sort of guilt to be happy. I mean, he's expressed when you go and you have, a, you, you're able to go on with your life and not have this, this profound sadness in this area. I don't have that choice. So there's almost kind of like this come with me in solidarity so we can feel the same thing. And it kind of brings that intimacy into a relationship when you have this shared sense of, um, pain and maybe what Carter is saying purpose as well. So I don't think it's unfair for him to ask that, you know, this is what happened in our lives. And sometimes whatever's given to people, that's what you have, that that's your life purpose. So I don't, I don't, um, it may never look exactly how Carter, you know, I mean, we come, come into this with different perspectives, but I certainly can appreciate when he says, mom, come alongside me. Um, that lets me know that you are understanding me, understanding the gravity of my trauma and pain. And I don't think it's unfair to ask. How do you feel about it though? Um, I, again, it's just a sadness that this is what he is experiencing in life. I wish that wasn't part of his life. Yeah. I wish I could take it away. Um, I did a creative writing assignment a long time ago. I'm still working on it, but you know, for Carter, he looks, to, he looked, I'm his parent, I'm his mother. And I think mothers carry the stronger feeling because I was supposed to know, right. I'm the nurturer, the caregiver. I was kind of supposed to know even though his father had the penis, I was supposed to, I was supposed to know, right? And, you know, all through his life, you know, I made sure his toys were in place. I made sure that he got to, you know, baseball practice, you know, I took care of every aspect of his life. And so in this creative writing piece, something came to me, you know, like, mom, where's my foreskin? Like, you're supposed to know this stuff, mom you know, where's my foreskin white and the frustration that I can't find it and go put it back. Right. I mean, that's not going to happen. And that, that, I don't know if that helps to kind of explain where I am. Like I was supposed to know yeah. this and, and I can un imagine him looking into me and going, mom, you, you took care of everything. Why did, how did we miss that one? Right. So yeah, I mean, I think this is another stage in the understanding and I cry, but it's really, it's not, it's, there's a lot of hope in this as well, that I'm so, 
this is this is a level of conversation that that I haven't had with Carter. And it's while it's sad and it's permanent, it's also hopeful. I think tears are an appropriate reaction. You know, I want to acknowledge too that you're actually feeling it and that whereas many other parents might become defensive or or you know yeah. want to ensure that they want to avoid the feeling in some way you're feeling it and and Feel Carter it. um it sounds like your mom is aware of how severe this is and that sometimes even when you are having a conversation with her and she is and, and you have that moment of the feeling entering an otherwise happy moment she's even aware of it yeah were you aware that when you have that come up that she's sometimes aware of it um not exactly actually no but i definitely understand that you know when my mood suddenly changes or you know the expression on my face changes or something like that that they can probably tell something something is up with with me um and so i'm not surprised that she correctly identified you know, maybe what was going on there simply because I've expressed this, you know, so clearly to them in the past. He often so, sometimes says to me, why are you looking at me? You know, <laughs> you, I catch you looking at me and th this is why son, because I'm right. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Can't argue with that. You know, one of the things that I'm noticing is that you want her to be aware of the level of pain that you feel. Yeah. And I also I crave it even I'd say. And are you aware of the degree to which she wants to be with your pain and protect you? I don't think she'd have that reaction of tears if she didn't feel that way. Um, so that is so important to me, right? Having my mom understand the gravity of the situation for myself, but it never changes the situation that I'm in or what the genesis of this pain, right? This all originates from a physical issue that I'm experiencing. The psychological struggles around this are also very, very difficult to deal with. But I think this is really different for each man, right? Some men, some men, you know, might not be impacted as much physically, or that just might not bother them as much. But for me personally, that, that is, um, where I struggle with the, the most on this issue. So being able to communicate that element, that facet of this to my mom has been pretty difficult. And I, I think there are some things that I could have done maybe better on my end. You know, I've definitely tried. I've definitely, but having this conversation with your mom is like really difficult. When I'm describing anatomically the consequences for my own penis, like that's where this conversation begins getting really difficult, but that is what's so important. That's what I want my mom to understand is this, the sexual impacts that this has had on me and how that impacts me on a day-to-day -day basis. I recently have been in a sexual relationship with someone, someone that I really like, this girl that I really like. I want my mom to know that during this sexual relationship, 90% of the time, I felt nothing on my penis. It was my whole sexual experience is largely muted. That's so disturbing to me. That's so sad. That's it is so disturbing. sad. That's such a loss in my life. So what I want my mom to say and what, what I want you to say, Brendan, what I want society to say is you got screwed in life. You got screwed in life. You'll suffer with, for the rest of your life. And we failed you. I failed you as your mother. Your father failed you. The hospital failed you. The physician failed you. The state failed you. The federal government failed you. You got screwed in life. You got mutilated and you'll suffer for the rest of your life from a complete degradation of, you know, our moral, ethical, legal, and logical framework. You got, you, we failed you. That's what I want my mom and society. And that's, that's a proper response. And, and, you know, that's not even... That's just scratching the surface. That's step one. That is step one in a very, very 
very long process. And I've never had more confidence in my life kind of asking that from someone, right? This is, this is, I feel good. I'm like, wow, I'm standing up for myself now as a victim of an atrocity. I'm, I'm putting myself out there now and, and really, you know, communicating what happened and being real with people about what I'm expecting from them and the reality of the situation for myself and, and many other men. So I haven't really heard, seen that response, right? It's all um, kind of about, you know, how we can move forward and things like that. But before we can move forward, we need to establish um, and, and be present and real about what actually took place. So that's kind of the response to answer your question. That's, that's what I'm looking for. And I think, I think I'm really getting there with the people in my life and with my mom and, and other individuals. Mm -hmm. So Tiffany, is that response something you could give him, that acknowledgement? Yeah, I, I guess I'm still unclear, you know, I'm still unclear of what, um, what exactly he needs from me, you know, but in terms of responding to ex about the severity and how this has affected him sexually, you know, that's a harder conversation to have with your your child, um, yeah. Yeah, but, and I- But he's yeah. been very, very honest with me about that. And, um, you know, it is, it is sad. It is, a, it is a sad thing that this, such a, an important part of his Anatomy. life, especially yeah. with his relationship with, with another person is largely affected by this. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's big. So like something that I, else that I want to communicate as important to me, when I'm having like a sexual relationship or a sexual experience, oftentimes the thoughts that I'm having are dominated by my parents did this to me, right? Uh, this horrifying element to it where like, oh my God, I'm mutilated. My parents mutilated, my society mutilated. It's like this overall kind of um, very, very unpleasant experience for me, coupled with the fact that I have the majority of erogenous tissue on my, my sexual organ removed and the remaining sexual tissue, the properties of it have significantly, um, you know, been diminished because of the keratinization that's taken place. So another thing that I, you know, really want to communicate is that this feels like a radical thing that was done to my body. This is not just this small little snip. And I know you're aware of that. This is a radical genital modification surgery radical, right? When the majority of your erogenous tissue has been removed, how can I even accept that that's my reality? I want somebody to come in and say, prove me wrong. Um, but I, I, you know, know the reality of the situation for myself. And so I, it's sometimes difficult for me to even conceptualize. Here's the problem is sometimes I can have a strong relationship with you, mom, but other times I'm like, oh my God, what happened to me? How do you build a relationship with someone who facilitated your genital mutilation? I feel like I'm living this two life or this two face type of life where on one hand, like maybe I'm having a relationship with it, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, I was abused. I was abused. And I understand that you don't have, you didn't have the frame of reference at the time, but on the other hand, I'll never understand that. And we have to accept that I'll never understand how you handed your child over to have a penile mod, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't have that psychological profile that would ever be able to really understand that. And you know that I question things all the time. You've known that for a long time now. I wouldn't just blindly go with something. So I don't have that same frame of reference that you do. Mm -hmm. um, so it is very difficult. It's very difficult. And I think, you know, this process and this relationship will, will evolve more over time. But um, yeah, that's, that's, that's where I'm at right now. And so I would also like to be able to more effectively and have a deeper conversation on how, how this impacted me and how this is going to impact me going forward from a physical standpoint. I can't necessarily explain why that's so important to me at this moment in time. But, you know, I want you to know things like there are times where I'm sitting in the shower in a ball crying for significant periods of time 
going, how could this happen to me? I'm mutilated. I'll suffer. There are times where I'm masturbating or having sex where I'm suffering in that moment. That's not how the sexual experience should be, mom. That's not how it should be. This had devastated my sexual life. Why would I ever say that if it wasn't the honest to God truth? Why would I come on video and say that I'm doing this out of desperation? Hmm. I'm being upfront and honest and sharing this with you and other people because I don't feel like I have any option. I got screwed in life. This is not this minor trivial thing. This destroyed me sexually. And that's, it's just not fair that I would have to do that advocacy on my own. And I'm looking to incorporate this so intimately into my identity and come forward and say, I'm genitally mutilated. That's how I'm going to identify as an, I need you by my side on that. And same with my father, who I'm going to reach out to as well, who I've already reached out to, but haven't gone into as much depth of a, as I've had with you. And we need to approach this together. And that's the only real way that I see that we can truly build a relationship together because this has impacted me so severely. Um, it's not something that we can really move forward in the same way our relationship was in the past. This is a totally new relationship that we have now going forward, totally different than what it was before. Yeah, it's mother son, but there's a twist is, is all I'm going to say there. And I'm not sure you know, what that's necessarily going to look like, but I'm glad that you're interested in coming on that journey with me. Yeah. Tiffany, what would you like to say to that? Um, you know, I, I'm going to speak Carter, to Carter directly. You Please. know, um, I am just so sorry. I mean, and I've given up saying you know, most of the time I've given up saying I didn't have the information and just really kind of tossed away the excuses and just looked at the situation and the hurt that it's caused you. And, you know, I, I'm, I, it's, it's tough. I think we talked about it the other day, you know, I mean, every time we talk about it, it reignites things in me. Um, and, and guilt feelings in me, but, you know, it's, this is something you live with. And for us to have a relationship, I kind of have to live with it too. Um, I will say that I want to live in it in healthy ways. I think how we handle yeah. it is very healthy. You know, healthy, how do we define healthy? That we keep open lines of communication, that there's understanding and sort of acceptance where we both are in, in our po points in this journey. But, you know, I think we have a lot, maybe, you know, I think we're not probably unique in the situation that many um, men who come into this realization of what had happened to them and, you know, they're angry at their parents, you know, there's there's separation and, and maybe they don't ever come back together. Maybe that anger builds and, and continues to form a wedge. So, if part of this is, you know, modeling or demonstrating how you work through that process with your parent um, and conversations you can have and what what communication over this issue looks like, um, you know, that's that's really what I can offer as well as Absolutely. just keep listening. Carter, is this the acknowledgement you were looking for? I think it's definitely a part of it. I mean, even from having this conversation, I'm I'm feeling a lot of relief like getting these things off my chest, being able to communicate them. You're almost acting as a type of, you know, a, a role a counselor would fill or, or, you know, someone like that. So I think that mediator is, is an, maybe an important part of this process as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm definitely feeling relief on this issue that I experience. Is there uh, something you, that she could do that would let you know or make you feel that you've been fully acknowledged on this? I don't necessarily think in this moment right now, but um, over time, you know, becoming more involved in the 
activism, I, I wouldn't even necessarily say um, activism is what I'm looking to do right away, but this narrative that I'm looking to present on this, on this topic, you know, having my mom involved with that with me would um, significantly improve, I believe, the narrative and the effectiveness of it and the potency of it. And so when I'm on Facebook, right, and I know none of us should do this, but when I'm commenting and, and somebody humiliates me, right, I want to be able to tag my mom and she has my back in this situation, right? I would, that's the type of relationship that I want to have with my mom. On, You'd on like her topic. to be the protector that you didn't or, get when you were young. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's mm, very interesting. So how do you feel about that, Tiffany? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm actually grateful he's giving me that opportunity, right? Mm. I mean, he's saying, I'm going to give you like a second. Come on, mom. I'm mm. here. You get to do it. Do it again. And let's, let's get this right. Feels kind of like a, a second chance. So Carter, your, your mom just said that she wants to play that role. Yeah. And I'm, you know, that's very exciting news for me. You know, I might not be jumping in joy right now, but uh, you know, I always thought that my mom would come to that conclusion. To be honest with you, it's very unfortunate that this lies on the man and the person impacted to be able to communicate that to their parents um, that's extremely challenging to do. And I think a lot of men struggle with this. It requires, you know, a lot of emotional intelligence, a lot of confidence, almost a loss of ego to be able to present this to your parents without crippling anxiety. And then, um, and yet you have, and she's acknowledged it. Right. And so I'm very, you know, this couldn't have gone better in terms of, you know, the stage that we're at now, I believe. And I think this is very unique as well. It's very novel, the um, relationship that I have with my mom on this issue. I've seen in a lot of instances, either it's just never discussed, or it's, you know, and they kind of have a relationship, or there's no relationship between the parents and um, the, the, the child on this. In some instances, there's some communication happening, but not to the depth and level that I think that my mom and I are communicating, although I'm sure there are examples that, that people have. So let me ask, in the future, what is the last moment at which you'll know that she is the protector that you'd like her to be and someone who is fully acknowledging and taking ownership of the situation in your relationship? What's the moment that you would look at or hear or see and think, yes, this is, I think this is exactly it. You know, I think that's a really good question. It's not necessarily that I think I look at my mom as a protector, I would say. I know I just said that previously, but really I'm looking to just have her stand by my side on this issue. An advocate. Um, but, you know, I think in a lot of areas, it's very likely that I'm going to have to take the lead. And I want to bring my mom into this process with me. Um, if my mom is interested in, in taking the lead on this as well, I would love to, you know, stand by her side as well. So it sounds like you're an adult now, you are capable of leading and taking care of yourself, but you want your parents um, on your side. I don't, I don't want to be a leader. I'll put that up front right away. Okay. I absolutely do not want to be a leader at all. I would love to be the follower, right? I just sure. unfortunately don't see that leadership. So I want somebody to emerge hmm. that is a figure just, that is identical to what I'm trying to do. Cause I don't want to do that hard work. I don't want to put myself out there. Sure. I do not want to do this. Um, I'm doing it simply because I feel a call to action here and um, I don't see any other type of individual it, you know, involved in that way. So on the leadership thing, I can help a bit there. 
Um, but on the question of the role that you want her to play, what's the right. moment that you'll know she's showing up in the way that you want her to show up? I definitely think that's a question that I, I should have the answer to at this point in time. But the truth is that I, I don't. Um, it's important to know because that's the moment you'll know that you've gotten what you wanted. And if you don't know what it looks like when you get what you want, it's very hard to get what you want sometimes. So one of the things I'm noticing is that your mom really cares about you and she wants to show up for you in the way that you want her to show up for you. And she's acknowledging. But at the same time, I don't know if you know exactly what that looks like for you or are always aware of the ways that she's showing up. One of the things that I know in my own life is that I experienced a lot of uh, trauma and threats growing up. And so I trained my mind to look for threats because that was very important to my safety. And because that's what my mind was trained to look for, I wasn't aware of all of the love and support that was coming my way because I wasn't looking for it. And I wonder if you were to look and if you look for the amount of love and support that she wants to give you, if you might find that that's there also. You know, I 100% agree with you. I didn't really frame it that way in my mind previously, but I think that was something very insightful that you shared. The situation though, is that I'm in an active state of suffering regularly. I think I can move past this, right? I genuinely believe that in the future, this won't impact me like it is right now. But when you're suffering yourself, it's really difficult, as you mentioned, uh, especially when you're suffering significantly to be able to recognize those signs that somebody is caring for you and that you know has your best in interests in mind. Not, that's not always the case, right? Sometimes you're very grateful. Um, but in this instance, in this context, it does make it difficult for me to recognize all the generosity and the love that my parents have for me um, because I am suffering from this and, and really also because they had a primary role in, in this. And so I absolutely hear what you're saying. And I think a good exercise would to to be, to recognize what, to try to recognize, you know, all of the generosity and the good things that my parents have done for me. And I think that's a positive way to potentially move forward or, you know, look to move forward, but I'm, um, I'm not actively ever thinking about that. At this so moment. I don't want to bypass and just pretend that everything is good because there obviously is pain and that pain needs our presence. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if that pain is aware that we're being with it. If the pain is aware. The, the feelings that you have, the parts of you that are angry, that are upset, that feel this was an atrocity, are, there, is, are you aware that we're there with that too? I'm aware of it, but I, th the truth is, is it doesn't have any significance to me. And I wish it did. I mean, I really do. I wish it did. But the honest answer is it, it means very little to me. So I wish the, I wish I had a different answer. You know, so I what does that part need instead? What would be meaningful to it? So It's a difficult answer for me to give, but I would like to start seeing progress um, on, not on the relationship necessarily with my mother, but on the abandonment and criminalization of this practice. So that's something that's very difficult for me to accept that in the United States and really the rest of the world, um, this is a practice that continues, it persists, sometimes it's even condoned by the state, federal government. Um, 
And that I just have to live in this reality in which this very, very harmful practice is being, is continuing. And the reason I want, I do advocacy is because I don't want this practice to continue. And I want my mom involved in this process with me. And the reason that I want my mom involved in advocacy is not because of the, of the fact that it will make me more comfortable or something like that. It'll show that she's by my side. That's, that's one component of it. But it's that I think my mom can play a very potent role in this type of advocacy and this mother-son combo um, could garner a lot of attention towards this issue. And so that's what I'd love to see with my mom is us being successful together as a team on this issue um, or at least attempting it, right? But really I'm looking to have some wins here. I constantly lose on this issue, right? That's At least that's how it feels when you know I'm what? doing advocacy on this is it's just loss after loss after loss after loss i'm looking for some wins here you know it reminds me a bit of the biblical saying about uh love without works is empty it sounds like you are aware of the love but you really want some works yes um i'm you know i'm i'm aware of it i i think that this conversation really you know maybe helped resolve some of some of the underlying issues to, to be honest with you um, and then I communicated what I wanted to say. And Can now I, I think that there is a strong opportunity to address some call to action here going forward. So I've identified, and probably a lot of other people have identified that a mother son <clears throat> advocacy combo here could be quite significant. And so that's, that's the relationship I'm looking to have with my mom. And, and that's something that I really want to, you know, I want to move forward with this understanding, or at least, you know, beginning to think through how we can begin approaching this. I don't know necessarily what that's going to look like. What are we going to do podcasts? What type of material content are we going to look to put together? But because this has impacted me so severely, you know, that's what I'm looking for from my mom is this kind of commitment to public advocacy as a, you know, in tandem with, with me, right. As a combination here, and we work together and make this kind of a life pursuit here, um, to move towards the abandonment of routine general modification surgeries on, on neonates and juveniles, and then hopefully the criminalization as well. That's a, that's a big thing to ask of somebody. That's honestly quite, quite significant, especially in our society and um, the, the current climate of, the, of how this is perceived right now. That is a big ask, but it is what I'm asking. So I want to ask, if you, the two of you work together on this issue, is there anything that you gain by continuing to hold on to the anger or resentment towards her? not necessarily towards the world or towards the situation. We're not talking about that, but just in your relationship with her. I don't, is... I don't think there's anything that I would gain. And if I could just snap my fingers and all that hostility, and even in some moments, animosity could disappear 100%. I would do it. It would make my life easier. It would make my parents' life easier. Um, and that's, that's what I'd want. That's what I want out of this. Unfortunately, that's not how easy things are for me. Sure. And so I don't necessarily know what letting go of that would look like, but if anyone ever has any answers to that um, or can guide me through that process, or at least is willing to try, I, I would be interested in exploring that. But this is something very intimate and very primal, right? The emotion that I have towards this is this extremely it's not even complex or abstract. I mean, it should be fairly obvious why, you know, I feel the way that I do, but it's this very primal emotion that's difficult um, to just move on from. So it would look like potentially doing some of the healing work that both me and my wife are trained in. That's my guess is what it would look like because it's a big trauma and those sort of things can be healed 
but it requires two things. It requires that you'd want to heal it. In other words, if there's a gain that you get from the feeling, I know sometimes anger can be very motivating and it can actually create connection too. When we're angry, we're actually in often in very strong connection with the person we're angry at. Mm. But I, I think that that part of you that feels angry or that wants her to work with you on this issue would understand that that connection and that collaboration and that the two of you working together could be even more powerful and effective in the world if it is based entirely in love. I think it's fair enough and a, a very powerful statement. Um, a lot of times in the past, I would say, you know, I'm looking to address that after all these other things are taken care of, but, but I'm beginning to recognize that it is very important to address that at, in concurrently or even before um, all, this, all these other objectives that I have. It sounds to me like both of you will need support around the things that you're feeling but that both of you are aligned and wanting to work together and have a good relationship and take care of the things that are important yeah. and take care of each other. Absolutely. I'm in, I'm in agreement. Is there anything else that you two want to say to each other before we end this conversation? Knowing that, of course, I'm sure the two of you will continue to talk together for the rest of your lives, but <laughs> for this conversation. Yeah. Well, you know, mom, I'm really appreciative that, that you came on this, you know, call with me today and that you were willing to have this conversation. I think that's something that a lot of parents right now absolutely would not be interested in doing. So some acknowledgement there um, that how impressive this is, is definitely warranted in my opinion. I, I can, from, if I was in your position, I can see how difficult um, this would be. And I think there was a lot of things that had to happen before we get to this point, but I'm extremely grateful. Um, I might not always express it the best, but in this, in this moment, I really do want to express it. I'm, ex I'm very, very grateful that you came on and had this conversation with me. And it really means more to me than probably you will, you will ever know. Um, so I, I wanted to clarify that to you, that this was a very special and important and precious moment to me and something that I will remember for the rest of my life. And really it's the beginning of, I think, a much larger journey. So I want to say that, you know, I'm very appreciative that you came on and that, you know, I love you as my mother and I'm looking forward to moving forward with you. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear you say those words. You know, that just means so much, but, you know, son, I look at you and you know, I'm, I see you in a whole nother light and I just, you have every reason to be proud of yourself <laughs> and what you you've done. It's, it's really remarkable. And like you said, in the beginning, you know, you are, you, you, you're a leader, you know, you've become this, this person, whether you like it or not in a leadership role. And I think you have a lot, the, the way you work through things and your generosity and kindness and patience and intelligence you have a lot to offer this world don't ever forget that thank you for the kind words is there anything else that the two of you would like to add <laughs> good well i just like to say that i really appreciate the opportunity to have this conversation with the two of you thank you for being vulnerable and honest and willing to listen and change and connect to one another so thank you you'd, yeah if you'd like to talk in the future in some way let me know if you'd like to do um any kind of healing or change work with me or my wife i'm open to that too either the two of you individually or or together um but thanks again for being willing to talk thank you so much absolutely yeah thanks again mom thanks again brendan for hosting this and uh, looking forward to talking to you guys soon thank you all right all right Thank you for listening to the Brendan Murata show. If you liked this episode, please share it with someone else who would also like it and then go on whatever platform you listen to the show on and leave a positive review. 
If you want to support the show directly, go to brendanmurata.com slash show and subscribe there. Paid subscribers get special unreleased bonus material and live events that are only available to them. Once again, that is brendanmurata.com slash show. Thank you for listening, and I will talk to you all later.